So uh, let's go over these. Uh, I'm going to go over my live scope sets. So I have a lot of comments that people cannot see their lure on live scope when they drop it down uh, for whatever reason. <clears throat> so I have a lot of comments asking me about my settings. But right off the top of my head, I really don't remember what the settings actually are. So uh, we're down at the lake today. You can hear the wind puffing really bad in the background, so we're gonna kinda call it a little early today. It's really tough to try to uh, fish in all this wind. So I'm gonna get the GoPro down. We're gonna go over uh, live scope settings, and so hopefully uh, that may help you guys uh, the next time you're out uh, with those settings. Anyway, I'm gonna get it down, and the next time we're gonna go through each setting, my color schemes, and all, so you can uh, better see your lure. That's a nice one right there, y'all. Woo, dope. Wild life adventures, that's how we roll. <laughs> Okay, so let's start here. You can see uh, at this point here is the live scope looking out into the water column. And I'm going to show you something on your transducer uh, after a while, uh, right after this scene. To uh, you can your transducer can look out flat this way or deeper this way. Or either deeper this way so right now it's looking out this way you can see here five foot mark is we're back in the back of a cove so it's five foot deep and we're looking out here at 35 feet so if you want to change uh, that part over yeah, take two okay let's say we want to look out further here we're actually looking out this way it's 35 feet we're going to hit menu. We're going to look over here and look at forward range. It's 36 feet. We're actually looking at 36. And we can go uh, down 38, 39, 40. Or we can just touch it. It's looking out 76 feet. Let's click done. So we're looking out to 76 feet out in front of us. And we're going to see a lot less detail at 70 feet than we would be at 10. So if we're actually looking for crappy or fishing a brush pile, we're going to come back to forward range. We want to be somewhere between, uh, I like to look somewhere between 40 feet out and, and, about, 30, and about 30 feet. And for that reason, I have learned that when I see a fish out here, I can tell basically how big he is at that distance. If I am looking for cover, if I'm looking, say, for structure, I'll look out most of the time at 60 feet. And you'll know that you're looking out 60 feet because you'll see it over here. Now, that's just what I do. Now, Let's go back up to 40, roughly 40, that's 30 feet. I'm going to stay at 30 feet. Now you notice I don't have the grid on this screen here. I've taken the grid all the way off. I don't need the grid. Uh, some people like the grid. I've eliminated a lot of uh, stuff on the screen. So when I'm looking at a fish, I can tell whether he's 10 feet away, 15 feet away, 20 feet away, and the depth here. So I don't need the grid to tell me exactly where it's at. Now, let's go to the menu and hit the settings. Uh, right here, the first one, my gain is set on 62. That is the first one you need. Somewhere around 60 to 70, you can play with that. And you'll notice, you'll see how grainy it is here. There's a lot of filth in the water. You can go up with that. The more gain you give, the more uh, debris you see. 
and the less if you got your gain set way down you don't see as much stuff it looks cleaner I have just set mine at 62 seems to work very good uh, with my gain and the only time I change my gain is if there's a lot of trash in the water so let's hit done so let's go back to menu and let's go to sonar setup here on appearance I like black emerald I have my trails off grid overlay that is on head that's the grid I was talking about on the front uh, my color gain is on default bottom fill is off scroll history I've got it hidden uh, if you go to color scheme you can change it uh, to midnight blue you can change it to copper you can change it to amber I I personally like black ember now if you have an issue with uh, if your color have some color blindness one of these colors may be better for you uh, sonar setup let's look at noise reject very important noise reject high right there boom uh, TVG TVG is off uh, if you turn the TVG, you can say off, low, medium, high. Let's turn it on high. Uh, it, it distorts the screen. Some people like low. I just completely turn mine off. So, TVG is off. Data overlay, hide, hide, hide. This is all your water temperature. I do have my water temperature. I like to keep it on. Uh, let's turn it back on auto we're gonna go back uh, noise rejection is high let's go to installation uh, depth. Uh, flip this off orientation forward now some people will hit this they'll get the perspective view or forward down auto I like the forward view that's why I'm looking out forward in front of the uh, live scope Back to sonar set up installation. Uh, pitch angle. Very important. I have it set to default. That's the pitch angle. You can change the pitch angle on looking out, but I just keep it on default. Uh, AHRS, I have it off. Let's see. What other settings do you need? one thing that will help you is when you're looking uh, at a signature in the water a live scope is uh, if you'll use a double jig here or a big split shot up the line and that gives you two signatures to actually see when you're dropping uh, the, the lure down to the fish and I'm assuming you guys are able to see the fish on your live scope. I'm assuming. And part of that settings, if you see the fish, if you can see your lure, you should be able to see the fish. Okay, so I just went over the settings. Now, if you want to see your lure, you set those settings like I have mine, and you'll be able to see those lures go down to those fish. And, uh, you know, I have, I have, that is my personal preference for my settings. You may have different uh, personal preferences, but that's just my opinion, and that's what I have mine set on, and it works for me. Uh, it may not work for everybody. Now, once we take the boat out of the water, I'm going to show you one more thing on uh, where my transducer is mounted and set on my uh, trolling motor, and I'm going to show you about the angle, so that's coming up next. Let's take a look how I have my transducer for my live scope mounted now I have a foot control trolling motor so with my foot of course I control it this way some people put them on a pole where they can control it manually with a hand some people have it on a pole that's mounted to their um, their shaft of their trolling motor the where they can still have it foot controlled so it really doesn't matter about that part of how or what type of 
uh, mount you have for your transducer, but it does about the angle. So let's take a quick look at that. So very quickly, you can see that, of course, this is my propeller and the, uh, the, the foot of the trolling motor is going to, is going to be looking in this direction. So you can see the transducer is mounted, orientated perpendicular to the shaft. Do you see that? So it's actually looking out this way at a slight angle into the water column. Now, sometimes you noticed how this unit is offset from the foot control from the foot of the motor. That is so it can look past the edge of this motor. Now, sometimes if you get this transducer turned slightly this way or slightly this way, when you drop your lure down, it isn't within the eye cone. Now, one other thing before we move on to that. And so you want to make sure that you mount this transducer as straight with the foot of that trolling motor as you possibly can. Because on the top here, you have this arrow. You see that arrow? So that is going to give you the, the, the direction that the beam is actually shooting out into the water column. You see that there? I'm standing on the ground, so I think you can probably see that okay. So that tells me the beam is shooting out this way. Now, one other thing to note, I'm going to show you that I do in the summertime, it helps me see my lure when it gets deeper. Uh, we're going to go back down to the transducer I'm going to show you. In the summertime, this transducer is shooting through the water column in this direction. If you take these four bolts off, there's a bolt inside that you can loosen. And you can tilt this transducer eye from this direction, 45 degrees. You can tilt it down further to look further into the water column. And we're going to go back to the chalkboard at this time, and I'm going to show you how that looks different on the chalkboard in the water column. Now, so here's the eye of the trolling motor here. So when it's set, here's our transducer sitting here. When it's looking perpendicular out into the water column, it's looking very similar to this in this, in this fashion. So you see your lure, and he drops his lure through the zone, and he can see it. And of course, it sees fish out in this cone. Now before, like I said, you can look out at 30 feet, or you can look out at 70 feet. The further you look out, the deeper it looks. You can also set the depth that this magnifies. Now. Let's remove, let's remove this one. Now let's say in the summertime, uh, it is summertime and you want to change this because you're not seeing your lure. When you drop your lure into the water column, you're not seeing it down here deep. So you drop your lure down and the further it goes down, and let's say this is the Let's say that's the 20 foot mark there. You're not seeing your lure past 20 feet. You come to your transducer, do just what we talked about. You tilt that transducer for being perpendicular. One click down. Now, what that does is that helps the cone to see at this angle down in front of you. So what I have to do in the summertime to see I'm fishing fish that's say 22 to 30 feet deep 
I lose sight of my lure when it's around 20 feet. Now that's just me personally. You may find something different. But when I drop my lure down, it gets down past about 22 to 24 feet. I begin to lose the sight of the lure falling in the water column. So at that point in time, I'm not fishing fish anymore in that 10 foot shallower range because most of the fish are actually deeper. So what I'll do is I'll tilt this transducer to look further down in the water column so I can see my lure and those fish at a deeper range. Hope that makes sense for you. And even though you can change, and I know you're going to say you can change the depth that it's looking, you can do that. But to see your lure falling down deep, and I can see an eighth ounce jig down at 30 feet to a fish. To do that, you need to change that angle down and look deeper into the water column. That'll help you. Fall, winter, spring, I leave mine straight at the top. I don't have it tilted. Summertime when fish are deeper and early fall, I'm going to tilt this transducer down so I can see the lure at a deeper depth. So I stepped inside. Uh, I'm going to step inside the shop and end this video. So basically when I got my live scope, I did some research. I looked at videos just like you did. I looked at other people's settings that they had. And uh, many of them were, say, some were close, some were not. And then I kind of adjusted my live scope to where it, it meets my needs. Now this is just a suggestion in this video, by no means am I saying that, you know, I'm a Garmin rep and I know all the best settings. Uh, I would be crazy to say that. But I have a lot of comments about why my screen is clear, uh, how I see, you know, the fish so clear, the lure so clear. And so if you go back through these settings, you may have to watch this video a couple of times. And I'm gonna give you another, uh, point one other note to remember once you get your settings like you want them get you a piece of paper and write all those settings down put it in a ziploc bag or something water type and leave it in your boat just in case your settings gets off someone monkeys with your unit for whatever reason um, or you just get them off sometimes you have a reference to go back to and look uh, i was in south carolina Got them mucking around with my settings, got them all out of sorts, and I had to go and get my paperwork, pull it out, and go back and reset everything. That will help you. Uh, you will, each time go to the lake, you'll adjust some on your settings, you'll adjust some on your settings. I developed my settings, I would go fish, and I wouldn't like what i seen, and I would play with the settings as I fished along till I developed. So, I hope you've seen something in the video that you learned. I hope you've seen something in the video that you enjoyed. I hope uh, this helps you if you're a bit struggling with some of your settings on LiveScope. Uh, remember, God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button below and subscribe to the channel. Uh, please comment. Enjoy to see your comments. Uh, hit the like button. Click the notification bell so you don't miss an episode of Wildlife Adventures. And as always, you remember, it's a wild life and I'll see you on the water.